the IOCCC prize in cyclonic coding, which sounds messy and destructive like pretty much all of my attempts at coding. And a perfect timing to introduce this prize, don't you think? I think we can do that. Let's let's bring down this trophy. Who won? And the IOCCC prize in perfect timing goes to Nicolas Carlini from the United States. And this is Nicholas's second um, uh, win on IOCC, um, winning entry. And uh, the first one and back in 2020 was the best of show. It was an, um, that was an amazing uh, abuse of Libsy. Um, uh, you should check that out. But this one is particularly impressive. And I think it's, it's, it has a perfect timing for uh, what it does. So question becomes, well, what does it do? Um, let's see how you compile this code straightforward. Now it does have that data data thing, but that's a that's a, uh, a linker problem. So it's a pretty straightforward compile. If you look at the code, you've got starts off with some some includes and some defines and defines int as underscore. And then you've got this block of um, characters with control K's and A's and other things there. It's, a, it's sort of like this, this encoding of something. Um, notice you say, notice that how that encoding uses creatively the curly braces, spaces, and semicolons to uh, minimize the count of useful characters in the program. So it kind of yeah, abuse of the because, account. Yes, the the um, the rule two B, which uses IOCC size, which the original author or Anthony C. Howitt won this time as well, um, considers white space and curly braces and semicolons as sort of syntactic stuff, and so it doesn't count against uh, you if you use those characters. So. Um, uh, Nicholas, of course, it still has to be under 4,903 bytes. You just can't do infinite curly braces. Uh, but Nicholas made a uh, fair use of that to produce this interesting string. Um, going further, you get this code blob of, of stuff. Um, and you say, well, what does this look like? Playing formatted, here is that string. And you can see in, in this set that we have this, uh, uh, these 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 functions. Here's the main function here, returning an int, um, and it had this other uh, two other auxiliary functions on the side, and it it again um, without understanding what that string is, it's hard to understand what is this thing doing because it's got these it's got this sort of logic which it isn't apparent why. Um, so if you Pile and run the program. It first of all, you 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 need to be patient. Um, this particular example is of a calculator where it took about set. It take on a, on a, on a fast machine. It takes about seventy five seconds per operation. So you see that it does a five and a plus, a three and a minus produces two um, dot a sum, and the s is a square root. You get the square root there. Um, and you say, well, okay, Ooh, so you've got some slow calculator. What, what's the deal, right? Here's another case of a Fibonacci program. Again, you look at this stuff, you see this is just a bunch of strange kind of binary. Um, and by the way, there's a, there's an interesting um, little feature. Um, the zeros get turned into spaces. Um, we will have a, a challenge for somebody to fix the bug that's in fib.bin. Um, going on. But again, it does the correct Fibonacci calculation. It takes about 17 seconds per Fibonacci number. And you say, well, that seems like an awful lot of time. What could it possibly be doing? This is an emulation of the Intel 4004 microprocessor, the world's first microprocessor. It's emulating at, I believe, is the gate level. 
So that character, weird character string is an encoding of the gate logic of the entire chip. And this program goes through the, the flow, logic flow for this particular chip. The, the original target for this Intel chip is this calculator, um, the biz, Busycom, that had a four function calculator. It had a square root, that was the square root key over there, um, as well as a, a, a register and so forth. And the, the, the inside the circuit board of this calculator was this. Um, so here is the 4004 chip with a bunch of auxiliary chips on the side. Um, and Leo, you want to talk about why you, you thought the perfect timing was a perfect prize for this? Yeah. Uh, perfect. Yeah. So if you look at the image of the calculator, it didn't have an LCD display or you know, LED display for that matter or a plasma display. It had a drum printer that printed the digits. And to print digits on the drum printer, you have to synchronize the moment where the hammer strikes the, the drum with the exact character or a digit that is exactly beneath the, the, the hammer. So, and that requires a special kind of a simulator. In addition to simulating the chip, you'll have to simulate the, the timing of the drum and uh, strike the proper hammers at the proper time. So, and uh, yeah. well, of course, people will be very interested in what happens if you try to divide by zero. Well, I've tried that and it does print a, a, a row of periods exactly the, the same way as the original calculator did. So yeah. it didn't have an E, it didn't have an E character on the side as, as current calculators yeah. do. And, and the 4004, this was the first target um, uh, application for this 4004 processor. Um, the first industrial application was a, um, a five-way intersection in Hayward, California, uh, where the lights had to synchronize, like it was like uh, Mod, Mission, E Street, D, and 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 um, uh, I think also um, El. I think it was El Camino as well, or Foothill, right? Um, and uh, that was a complex light uh, application. It also had included things such as if one of the bulbs burnt out, so it so the the algorithm knew that that white was going to be displayed and went and moved the a whole five-way intersection into a, a safe mode. That particular light sequence actually um, was online for um, for almost uh, almost thirty years. I I had the privilege of actually seeing the chip on that circuit board, the circuit board sort of similar to this. Um, and it ran for many years. It was only when the need for having a emergency vehicle like an ambulance, they have a certain flashing sequence that could turn the intersection to let the ambulance through, through that they eventually retired. The... So well done um, on the timing to check out because it has to emulate some of this other uh, systems as well as the 4004 chip. Um, really quite a masterful piece of emulation. We've had we've had uh, chip emulators before, uh, but none of them are I think as challenging as this first world's first um, microprocessor. Thanks for watching, and before you go, please like and subscribe, and check out the social media links in the description below. And if you like, you can support us on Patreon to help us bring you new content, so you may enjoy our favorite universe even more.